Hovering in general is a dream of mankind. And on the downhill ride, the kids really do fly. I was always very interested in seeing how my toys work. I dismantled them, looking inside, and maybe that influenced my whole life. When Lexus approached with that questions for a new project, we thought it will not work, but let's try it. But we did it step by step. We thought it would be really interesting. And we thought maybe they need a track of 10 meters and this can all be done and it would be quite easy. When I then heard about these plans for jumping and other things, I said, okay, that's a tough job. This track has three poles, a North Pole, a South Pole, and then a North Pole. And in between, there's a magnetic field, which is on top of the track. Now, how to see this with your eyes? You cannot see anything, of course, but you can sense it with the magnetic material. As soon as you come closer, you feel the force of the magnetic field. 25 years ago, the high temperature superconductors were detected. The superconductors inside of the board are made of yttrium barium copper oxide. And if you bring the superconducting material at a distance above this track, and cool it down with liquid nitrogen, gets its superconducting properties. Then this stores this magnetic field and is able to levitate above this track segment as long as it is cold. A very stable levitation is possible, which is passive. You do not need any energy for this. One can freeze in a magnetic field in the superconductors. There was a question, could you imagine having inclines? We answered yes and tried to build one. And then came the declines, then came the bended curves in a very small radius. And so things developed. It's a real, real amazing, fascinating project. We hope to inspire people. This project may show them nothing is impossible. Bicycles are great. If you use it regularly, you probably had an idea to go electric and make your commute easier. But buying an e-bike is just too much of a stretch. And well, it's just not, not you, is it? Well, you now have a choice. Make your bike electric. When you want it. When you need it. All in a matter of seconds. With Ruby, your bike becomes a perfect electric commuter. An all-in-one solution with integrated batteries, motor and power electronics makes steep hills smoother and long distances shorter. No more wondering about where to store your e-bike. Lock Ruby to your bike for a short stop. Or take it with you for a fast recharge. No messy installation, just a small clip-on sensor for tracking how much additional power you need. With multiple sensors, you can install Ruby to as many bicycles as you like. Yes, you can share it too. You can now convert your bike into an electric vehicle for daily commutes, while still having the possibility of a good weekend exercise. Your bike becomes a multi-purpose vehicle. Let's make your daily commute a lot more fun. Ruby, an on-demand e-bike. This is going to be good, really good. My name is Mike Bertov, and I reimagined the wheel. It doesn't spin like a regular wheel. It doesn't look like a regular wheel, and it packs a ton of power. My name is Dakota Decker, and today we're putting our latest prototype to the test. We invented a new type of wheel, a wheel that can house all sorts of components inside the wheel. Anything you want, you can put in. I was watching Tron, and I thought, that is a really cool bike. I really want one of those bikes. So I thought, why don't we put a motor? Why don't we put a battery inside that wheel? And I thought, you know what, let's do this. And I left my job and I started building one. I have zero engineering skills. I have zero engineering background. I gobbled some things together just to prove the concept. I made it out of really heavy, really inefficient materials. The design was just atrocious. 
Looking at it now, it's embarrassing, but I am very proud of what I was able to do with absolutely zero skills. I showed it around to people after it was done, a few people, and the reaction I got was outstanding. It was amazing. I knew it was a big idea. I am amazed at how far he got having uh, no mechanical engineering background. He did very well with that. And from there, he found uh, me and our other uh, coworker, Gideon. We were both mechanical engineers by trade, so we had the experience and the expertise and the skills to actually take that initial prototype that he had created and make it into a, a working version that can actually go on a bike. We removed all the spokes and instead put rollers around the outside, so just the tire is spinning, nothing internal to that. And that freed up all that space to put you know, the motor, the battery, the controller, all the electronics, everything you need to make an electric bike. You could put anything you want in there. I mean, we have headlights on one of our models. We have, um, you can put like a TV screen in there. It'll be an advertising. You can put a coffee maker in there if you want. You can put a cell phone charger. You can put you know, a compartment to hold, your, to hold your phone or your backpack or your books or anything you want in there. As an academic experiment, yeah, we did it. We made a very cool looking wheel, but to actually make it something that's useful, something that people can use on a daily basis, they can afford, this was our biggest challenge. So this bike, uh, we're targeting, it's gonna go just about 20 miles an hour, it's about 32 kilometers an hour, and we're shooting for a range of 20 miles as well, or 32 kilometers. If on top of that, you wanna pedal, which most people who have a bike are gonna wanna pedal. You can easily get up to, you know, double, triple, quadruple that. Our biggest challenge today is testing this new size of wheel that we're using for bikes. Testing it on different bike frames, and we don't know how it's gonna react. Uh, the bikes are extremely not standard. So we wanna make sure that this works across different riders on different bicycle types. When people see it, they don't know how to react. It doesn't make sense. Everybody's staring. Everybody always stares. This is something funky. It's something n they've never seen before. Imagine a wheel rolling down the street that doesn't spin. It's, the looks I get are uh, amazing. Uh, I, you know, when I look at it, it still doesn't make sense to me. There's a lot of surprises. <laughs> but, but it, a lot it, of fun, though. A lot of fun. It performed great. Uh, I had a lot of fun riding it on the gravel, on grass. I mean, it, it, it performed better than I expected. There's a, there's a couple of tweaks. There's definitely a couple of tweaks, but it performed great. And it held up to a lot. That wheelie test, I mean, that thing dropped like four or five feet straight down there and it didn't even phase it. I'm really impressed with that. Also the water, I mean, we were kind of worried about having no traction in the water, but it seemed like it didn't even phase it at all. I was watching a movie and I dreamed up a thing and I actually did it. That's the most amazing thing. It wasn't just me, of course. It was an entire team, but we actually did it. I, the dream is actually right there behind me. That's an amazing thing to me.
My name is Dakota Decker. I'm the Chief Technical Officer at Geo Orbital. And today I'm going to show you how to install your new Geo Orbital wheel onto your bike. So this is our demo bike. Like most bikes you'd find in a store or in your garage, they have this silly powerless wheel on the front with spokes. Worthless thing. We've got to get rid of that. First thing we need to do is loosen the brakes. Then down at the quick release, rotate this lever 180 degrees and twist it counterclockwise a few times until it's loose. Then simply hold the wheel and lift the bike right off it. Nice and easy. Now we'll grab the Geo Orbital wheel and reverse the process. So align the axle with the fork, push down firmly so you're sure that it's seated on both sides. And then take the quick release, just gonna spin this clockwise until it's snug, and then take this lever and rotate it 180 degrees. That should take a bit of force to lock it in firmly. Then we can tighten your brakes back up around the rim. So there's one more support point on the Geo Orbital wheel here. This is the torque arm. This is meant to react the force out of the motor, and make sure we don't damage the forks at all. So what you want to do is take the entire wheel and rotate it forward until these rubber pads hit the fork. Then take these two rubber straps, wrap it around the fork, and back over the torque arm. And the same thing on the back here. These don't need to be really tight, just make sure they're snug. And then finally take your throttle, just pull out a little slack in this line. Take the clamp, wrap it around your handlebar, hook it onto the bottom, and just tighten that lever like so. Now to turn on the wheel, simply turn the key here to the on position. Then on the throttle itself, there's a small gray button on the side. Press that and you'll see the lights come on. Now I'll show you how to charge the battery as well. You should have received a charging adapter with your wheel. Plug one end into the wall there, standard wall socket. You'll notice when the battery is not plugged in, there's a green and a red light. Now if we go to the battery now, you want to rotate this little knob here next to the key. That'll reveal the power input. And take this end and plug it right in there. You'll notice now on the charger, the lights have turned red and red. That means that the battery is charging. When the battery's full, it'll go back to red and green so you can know that it's finished. Now you can also charge the battery outside of the wheel itself. So come back here, we're gonna turn the key back to off. And then if you push the key in and rotate further, it'll go to this unlock mode. Now you have to remove the key to get the, the battery out. Grab the battery firmly and pull up. And it should just slide right out the side. So that's the battery there. There's a handle there to carry it as well. And the exact same thing, you're just gonna take this side of the charger, plug it into the battery, and notice that it's charging. So you can charge inside the wheel, outside the wheel, on the bike, off the bike, have multiple batteries, swap them back and forth. Very easy. Now we'll just put this battery back in so you can see that process. Same thing as taking it out. Make sure it's still in the unlock position. Start at the top here. You'll feel it latch on to the uh, locking bracket and then push down all the way. Key back in and turn it. And that'll lock it in place. That's it. Your wheel's good to go.
Introducing Honda's revolutionary personal mobility device, Unicub. Featuring the world's first omnidirectional wheel system, Unicub is able to move forwards and backwards, side to side, turn in place, and corner. Honda has taken the balance control technology it developed in its robotics research to the next level, providing riders with comfort and confidence. Unicub is easy to control. Simply shift your body weight and Unicub's incline sensor detects the direction of the lean. Unicub also calculates the speed intended by the rider, making quick, nimble movements possible. Featuring a compact design, Unicub makes it easy for the rider's legs to reach the ground and maintain a comfortable height with pedestrians. Weighing just 25 kilograms, Unicub has a top speed of 6 kilometers per hour and a range of 6 kilometers.